Hello, Audacious Church. I want to give you a warm welcome. And uh, if this is the start of your day, I'm praying and believing that this is going to be a great, great day for you. If it's later in the day, pray that you're finding God's favour and presence through your day. I am really excited to share this great prophetic truth with you today. Um, and it's a, a Bible verse. It's a real favourite of mine. Um, long time favourite. And I'm really encouraged uh, to share it with you. And I'm believing that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, that God's going to speak to you through it, that it's a word in season for you, whether you're thriving or whether you're surviving, that this is going to be a great, great word for you. So why don't you open your hearts and your ears to God's word as a read. And I'm going to read from you from Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28 this morning. Um, and maybe you know this already, but I'm reading it from the New, New Living Translation. It's a great translation. Uh, so let me read this and I really pray that you take this into your spirit. Uh, verse 28 says this, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden that I give you is light. I want you to just pause on those mo on those words for a moment. Maybe you just want to open that in your Bible and just just glance at that. Just take a moment, and for you personally in this moment, just uh, take on board those words and believe that He has got rest and He has got lightness for you right now. So just pause and uh, and take that on board. I love this great truth that Jesus preached to the crowds. Um, and we might not kind of really get the context of it in our modern day, but for the crowd that was listening to him that day were people that were farmers that understood what the yoke was. And the yoke is really this. Uh, it's what the oxen carried through the fields. It's the big, heavy wooden beam that would shape over the shoulders of typically a, a pair of strong oxen. And, and oxen are, are that symbol of strength they've got to be strong to be able to carry this great big heavy burden that's placed upon them they've got to have equal strength to carry it's no good having one of the oxen strong and one small and there being an imbalance because as they plowed through the field there would be an imbalance and they would go in the wrong direction so we're given this image that you've got to be strong to carry a yoke uh, this big heavy beam because what it does is it drags that plow through the field and ultimately what it does is it brings in a harvest you're designed not to veer off course you're designed to carry a yoke but as jesus said it not one that is burdensome is too heavy so that's what the yoke is but what i want you to understand though through this what jesus was telling us is about the one who is alongside jesus beautifully encourages us that in this journey that we're not supposed to do this on our own. We're not a single uh, ox doing this journey on our own, but we are perfectly in tandem with the one who is alongside us. We're told that this partnership is light and it's strength giving so that we can carry on the course perfectly well and bring in the harvest that we're destined to. So this image here that Jesus gives us is he's alongside us. I love that definition. When I think about the Holy Spirit, I think about the definition that he is the one who comes alongside. And that's what this imagery that we've got here today is that we're doing our life, we're doing our journey, but we're not on our own. Jesus is right there. His Holy Spirit is right there. Um, and we're in tandem with one another doing this journey, but we're not doing it on our own. He partners with us. He coaches us, he empowers us, he strengthens us, and he carries the weight. Um, you know, Paul talks about the yoke as well. He talks about um, not being unequally yoked. Elsewhere in the New Testament, he says, um, if we're going into a relationship, a long-term partnership, don't yoke yourself unequally with somebody else. Don't commit the whole of your life to carrying a yoke with somebody that is not equal in strength to you. Um, but what I love about this message, I love about this message um, is that Jesus uh, it makes a prophetic statement here. It's not just a, hey, hey, here, this is for you. 
this crowd here today, he makes a statement that perpetuates through the whole of time. And I want to use these words that it's the ultimate yoke, because what he does is he prophesies his death. He talks about the yoke. And what is the yoke? It's the big, heavy wooden beam that goes over the shoulders. And what was he to do not too long after? He was to carry a big, heavy wooden beam for us. That is the cross. And the message of the cross is that he takes our place, the weight of our sin, a burden that we can't carry, a heavy burden that we can't bear so that we can be free, take rest from sin. So he exchanges a heavy weight that we can't carry and graces us with one that we've got the power to carry. So he took the heavy cross for us and the heavy burden from us. And salvation, as we know, is light, it's burden free. And our destiny, though undeserved, was not the cross, or so that, sorry, that was deserved, was the cross. But what we're given instead is freedom to walk in. So I want to encourage you to maybe give your life to him today again. If your life is heavy, if it's burdensome, if, if you feel the heavy weights upon your shoulders of life and the burden of that, then Jesus says again, comes to us again and says, let, let me take that from you. Let me exchange it. Let me, you know, what I did at the cross was deal with that. So now take my yoke, take my light yoke. And he stands alongside I'm confident in this today that in your life, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, that if you come to him, if you lay your burdens down, that there's a few things that are definitely going to happen. First of all, number one, you'll get a living relationship with him. That's what this life is all about. That's what this journey is all about, that we're doing it with Jesus. We're doing the journey with Jesus. He's carrying the yoke with us. He's doing that journey. Number two, he's already promised that he'll give us rest. So he will give you the exact rest that you need right now in this season, he will give it to you if, as he said, you come to him. So come to me, lay your burdens down and I'll give you rest. Number three is that he will give you the grace to do what's ahead. It might seem like, how can I carry what I need to carry? How can I do this journey? How can I do it? Well, he stands alongside and he will give you the grace. It seemed ridiculous that I would be in partnership with a living saviour. How does that even work out? Well, that's, that's the grace that he gives us. Number four, he will take us on a direction that is on his perfect course. We're in tandem, we're in partnership. He is the one leading the direction of, of our lives. And I, I regularly pray that prayer. God, you know more than what I know. You see more than what I see. And I have will, desire, emotion to what I want to happen next or the direction that I want to go. But God, I lay that down. I come to you, I lay that down and you lead the direction. So let him be the lead ox, so to speak, and direct the way that we're going. And fifthly, and crucially, you know, what's going to happen, I'm confident, is that if we come to him and lay our lives down, he is going to bring in a harvest. I love that we're going to do this in church, through the campuses and locations, through what we're doing throughout church, through the missions that we've got coming up. There's going to come a harvest because we're part of something bigger. There's going to be a harvest because Jesus is right there alongside. If we're doing it on our own, we're just going to veer off course. We're going to go around in circles. But with him in tandem and in partnership, there will be a harvest. So I pray today for you, Audacious Church, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, that you would humble yourself, that you'd come to him and that you would take his yoke. And I just want to pray that over you and declare that over you, uh, whatever you're going through right now. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you are the one who comes alongside. You have destined us for harvest. Harvest, you've graced us. Um, and I thank you that you absolutely give us rest and peace. So for every listening ear right now, I pray that your Holy Spirit be alongside, leading, directing, guiding, gracing, empowering, strengthening, coaching. I thank you for your great grace and your great power. For everyone that's listening now, I pray for humility in us that we don't know it all, but we open our lives up to you to do something miraculous today. And everybody said, Amen. Church, you are fantastic. Keep being a part of what's going on throughout the locations, throughout the campuses, throughout life groups, throughout missions, through everything that we're doing in the church. Don't deviate from that. Stick close, stay connected and enjoy what's going on throughout this season. Love you, church. Take care and I'll see you soon.